People of the realm, season 6 is well and truly over, and just as we've waited years for Doran and the Dornish to reveal their master plan, sadly, the gods of the Seven have sent the stranger our way, along with the god of all sand snakes, and it's all been ruined. But today's video is about someone a little more interesting, Oberyn Martell's paramour, Elaria Sands. Westerosi and the Sosi. For those of you who have yet to visit the Citadel and read any of the books, fear not, for this video contains just my ponderings and predictions based on the show alone. In case you've been hiding under a rock or have a case of severe gout and cannot leave your palace, allow me to get you up to speed on things so far. We first meet Ilaria and her lover Oberyn whilst they are shopping for some fleshy delights in one of Baelish's brothels. During her introduction, we see that the Dornish have no qualms about their sexuality, and this pair openly share. Ilaria sprawled out on her bed, peruses the wares of the establishment in the form of three young women, and she chooses the one who isn't timid, which parallels herself. She then corrects the pimp over, who addresses her as my lady. She tells him that she is a bastard and proud to be one, and do not use lies to address her. Next we see Ilaria actively trying to prevent Oberyn from killing a Lannister man at arms, when he's overheard by Oberyn singing The Reigns of Castor May. She's only partially successful as Oberyn still stabs him through the hand before being interrupted by Tyrion Lannister. Onwards to Joffrey's wedding where we have a verbal sparring session, Ilaria and Oberyn versus Tywin and Cersei. Cersei is quick to mock Ilaria's bastard's origins and Oberyn points out Cersei is a former Queen Regent, not the current serving one. He then goes on to point out further that everywhere has its differences, that in some places the highborn frown upon those of low birth, and in other places the rape and murder of children is uh, considered distasteful, and it was fortunate that Mycella was safe in Dawn. I would say that Team Ilaria and Oberyn won that verbal battle. So we go on to Joffrey's wedding and his death where it is witnessed by Ilaria and Oberyn. One thing that is also witnessed as well is the fact that Tyrion appears to have been the one who's done it and people jump to accusations later in the trial by combat. She is actually surprised by the sheer size of the mountain who Oberyn has uh, agreed to fight. She asks Oberyn not to leave her in this world and that would be their last conversation. As the mountain smashes out Oberyn's teeth with a gauntless fist, he then pops his eyes and finally crushes his skull. Ilaria is witness to it all and lets out a horrible scream. Sometime later we see that she has returned to Dawn, still mourning the loss of her love. She angrily confronts Doran Martell, demanding vengeance for Dawn to take up arms and even to hurt Mycella who has been betrothed to Tristan. Doran states that under his rule, she is forbidden from acting without his consent, and that's where Ilaria realises that Doran cannot remain in power if he continues to do nothing. So she starts to plot, Ilaria along with three sand stakes, Abara, Nymeria and Tyene, plot to kidnap Mycella, knowing that Jaime is in Dawn attempting to save her. The plot does not go to plan as Doran already knows and promptly has them arrested. Ilaria is present later when Doran confirms to Jaime, who is now a guest, that he is sending Marcella back to King's Landing. Ilaria is not pleased as this robs her of her vengeance. One insult too many towards Doran upon her attempting to leave results in a death threat for her unless she swears allegiance to Doran, which she does. Before Mycella is set to leave, Ilaria tells Jaime that she's fully aware that Mycella is his daughter and not his niece, and so Mycella is ready to set off home finally, but not before a goodbye kiss on the lips from Ilaria. A little later, we see her taking the antidote for the poison that was on those lips. Mycella dies at sea before she ever reaches home. Now fully aware that time is against her, Ilaria meets Doran in his favourite place, the Water Gardens, along with her daughter Tyene. Their conversation is interrupted by a message delivered by the Maester, Mycella is dead. 
before Doran can act, Tyene stabs his protector Aerio Hulta in the back and drops him like a sack of potatoes. Ilaria lets slip the dagger from her wrist and stabs Doran in the chest, no other guards move. As Doran lays dying, Ilaria berates him on his weaknesses and his failures, his inability to act. His only reply was for the well-being of his son, but Tristan is also dead. With the coup over, Ilaria becomes the leader of Dawn and she wastes no time inviting Elena Tyrell to treat with her. She promises her the vengeance that she seeks and when asked how she would produce such vengeance for her, out comes Varys, who utters the famous words, with fire and blood. Later in Danny's fleet, we can see ships of the Reach and the Martells are both present. So, now that we're all caught up, what is next for Ilaria? Well, initially I think very little. Her grand coup has finally come to fruition, and if we've seen it uh, with her in the past, she's often counsels patience as she did when Oberyn was in the brothel, but just like Elena, revenge has pushed her into a quite unreasonable state, and with her as the head of Dawn, is there any going back? I don't think so. It would appear that she does have the support of other people in Dawn, as Doran's guard chose not to move, neither to protect Doran or even to protect Tristan on the boat. And let's not forget that she is a Sand and the Dawners do not frown on bastards like other parts of Westeros. In fact, it may be to her benefit. As he did say, she does have 10,000 brothers and sisters. Now, don't take that too literally, she's just proving a point. There are a lot of bastards in Dawn, so she does have support there. So what is her end goal? Is it to see the Lannisters burn? Well, that's probably the case, but she's also backed herself a little bit into a corner. In an outright war between Dawn and the Lannisters, the Lannisters would win easily, but she's got herself some good bedfellows, just as it is for Elena, and the death of her family, she also wants vengeance there, so they're on the same page. But if they were to get this, what would happen then? Ilaria's ambitions are somewhat short-sighted, with one noticeable exception. She said to Doran whilst he lay dying, that never again will a weak man rule in Dawn. Now does this mean that in the future, all rulers of Dawn are going to be female? That would take a lot for her to get this solidified. Does this mean that we may end up with a bar of sand, who's the eldest of the sand snakes, being the heir to Dawn? Well, even if she isn't the heir to Dawn, there's certainly no lack of females in the line of succession. Oberyn, after all, did have eight children. We have not been introduced to any other Dornish that would challenge this rule, so for the most part, we can assume that they are safe from internal struggle. If only the showrunners had the foresight to include Ariane. Oh well. That being said, where do we go from here? As the next two series are so short, I really wish they had the time to repair the damage that's been done within the Dornish storyline, but sadly, I think the best they can do is a half assed resolution. So here's what I think this half assed resolution would be. So here it is. Ilaria Sands will support Danny's cause as long as it serves her purpose. If the two were ever to meet, it would only confirm how different they actually are from each other. Ilaria will most likely attempt to draw parallels about being a strong woman and the curse of weak men, and Danny may even have to fend off a seduction attempt. But I actually think Yara's got that covered. I'm not entirely sure if they will meet. I personally think that it'll be part of Tyrion's storyline and that'll have the larger role to play within Ilaria's progression or lack thereof. After all, it was Tyrion's niece who was murdered, which is odd now as he now knows how Oberyn must have felt. He wasn't there to protect her, but maybe he can get justice for her. Either way, Ilaria needs to be careful. After all, she is playing with fire, and I don't expect her to have a big role in things to come, and we're actually hoping that the Sand Snakes go away quietly, or they actually don't do anything too ridiculous or say anything too stupid, but I very much doubt that. So in short, Ilaria isn't going to be a very big player at all. She might have one or two episodes where she'll come to the forefront within Tyrion's storyline where Tyrion will most likely remove her from power, shall we say. As to what would happen with Dawn after Ilaria's removal, who knows? Or will Ilaria find a way to survive now she has gained all of this power? So the fires of theory grow cold for now. 
I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens with Dawn and if it can be recovered in any way whatsoever. Uh, let me know what you think about this video, as well as if you would like to see more Character 7 prediction videos. I'd love to hear what you'll think will happen with Ilaria moving forward, and will she be able to survive the future? I don't know. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button and uh, comment as it does really help the channel. So gather your furs, down your favourite swill and be on your way. But remember, I'm the Northlander, you know nothing and neither do I.